guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 169, featuring a brand new retrospective. Now you guys know the drill. You send me your request for games you'd like to see on the show. I put them on a list, roll the dice, and declare a winner. So without further ado, here is this week's winning submission. Hi Matt, Dan here from Lemon Amiga. I'd like to request a game. This one's called The Eidolon by LucasArts, released in 1985. Two years ahead of Dungeon Master, two years ahead of the King's Quest games. I never did understand this game. This was virtually the first fully 3D interactive environment. It included weapons, monsters, and a full role-playing game experience. And I had this on the Commodore 64, and guess what? I couldn't make head nor tail of it. So if you can help me out there, Matt, that'd be great. Cheers. And here we go, folks, with the I Dolan. This is a really strange game, very innovative in many ways, but also very bizarre. I came out in 85, and I, I thought I would start by showing you uh, the manual here briefly, just to give you uh, some idea of the story, which you would have no idea what was going on here if you didn't have this manual. Uh, but basically, you, you're in this mansion. It used to belong to this eccentric old inventor. You find his lab, and there's this spherical thing in there called the Eye Dolan, and uh, you can strap yourself into this and get transported into this mystical realm of the mind. So you're not really in a dungeon or outer space or something. You're kind of in this uh, Lovecraftian zone, I guess. It's a really interesting setup. But anyway, there's you can always uh, go back and pause that if you want to look at the pages. Uh, but let's get into the game. Uh, you just can't hear that and not get blasted back. It's the good old days of the... 80s, when computer games were highly original, not just franchise after franchise. Now, I'll be showing you the Atari 8-bit version here. I might show some of the other versions later. Uh, this is the platform that it originated on, though, so I want to focus in on that. I love this title music. There's not a lot of music in the game, but the music that's here is really good. As far as I've been able to tell, it was composed by Douglas Crockford. Okay, so you move with a joystick. You can uh, fire with the fire button. Uh, you collect those balls with the space bar, but you have to wait until they have a diamond over them. That's going to be very important. Uh, you collect those to get energy. Oh, there we have our first little troll guy we need to eliminate. Now, yeah, you can shoot four different colored balls, and they all have slightly different effects uh, that we can get into uh, later. But the red balls are the most powerful. That's what I've been using most of the time here. Uh, by the way, to select uh, the different colors, you hit 1, 2, 3, 4 on the keyboard. So 1, 2, 3, 4 on the keyboard and the space bar, and then everything else is done through the joystick. Let's, uh, you notice, too, that after I defeated that troll, I got a new diamond there in the lower left corner. Uh, you need to collect all three diamonds. They come in different colors, red, blue, and green. Uh, there's the blue one. Uh, you'll need that to lower the force field protecting the dragon. Uh, and you never know which color it's going to be unless you go there first and, and see what's happening. Okay, I just picked up a blue ball. <laughs> and so now my screen is flashing. That basically suspends time. You know, as if the game's not hard enough, you have a very tight time limit. And the only way to uh, get more time is to get the blue balls. Okay, I'm fighting my first dragon. Now I want to shoot him as much as possible. And I can also hit the space bar to collect uh, his fireballs. As long as they're not red. If he shoots a red ball at you, <laughs> all, all you can do is shoot it. But the other colors, you, if you're positioned right, you can pick them up and uh, continue on. Okay, so that's the first level done. Uh, let's move on to level two. Let's go over the rest of this interface here. Now, starting on the left side, uh, that dial there tells you how close you are to the dragon. That's proximity sensor, basically. I've already explained the diamonds. Now, the thing in the middle, the colored circles, the one that's flashing is the type of ammo uh, that you've selected. Four different kinds corresponding to one, two, three, four on the keyboard. You'll also notice the timer there and the compass directions. Quite a lot of information packed into that. Uh, on the right side, we have a dial that shows how much energy you have left in your I Dolan. You don't want to let that get too low, or it's game over. Uh, the two 
tells you how many minutes you've got left. Another one on the left, that is. And the two on the right is the level that I'm on. So, you got it. Quite a bit of uh, <laughs> information, but you kind of need to know that if you want to play the game. Oh, what do we have over here? This guy looks like he needs to die. One of the coolest things about this game are all of the different monsters and the different personalities and quirks. Now, stupidly here, I'm just shooting this thing before he's become activated, so I'm just wasting my shots. You can only do damage to creatures once they're awake and coming at you. I'm not really sure what the rationale is behind that, but oh, now he's awake. <laughs> I think I just shot him in the nuts. Damn, that's, that's a pretty... I hope that's not supposed to be horrific, because that's actually hilarious. Okay, I'm out of, sh out of bullets here. I think I'm shit out of luck here. Uh, there's a fireball. I don't think I... You can sh if, if you're good enough, you can shoot these fireballs out of the sky and pick them up as energy. They become yellow balls if you can shoot them. Unfortunately, I'm <laughs> a lot more likely to get hit by it than to shoot it. I think those are the monstrous footsteps I'm hearing. Lots of... Oh, my God. <laughs> he got me. <laughs> oh, man. You just don't sh go around shooting psychological monsters in the happy sacks and expect to get away with it. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Try this again. The movement is kind of clunky. You know, you turn really slowly. I guess that sort of adds to the tension if you think there's something behind you. Okay, there's this guy again. This time I will creep up on him. Okay, now he's awake. <laughs> guess what's coming, buddy? <laughs> I think by now he'd learn to wear a groin cup. Oh my god, I just uh, exploded my own bullet <laughs> off the wall and killed myself. <laughs> God damn you, Lucasfilm. This is crazy. I mentioned this game is really difficult. <laughs> you know, and I'm cheating uh, by using all these save states and everything with the emulator. Of course, back in the day, you'd just been screwed. And a lot of this is kind of up to luck, I think. Okay, here's a little... What the hell is... Helicopter bug? That's, uh... Pretty weird. Kind of original, though. I don't think I've ever seen a helicopter bug before. <laughs> None, I don't know what these guys were on when they made this. Okay, there you go. Now i got to try to dodge this fireball. Uh, or I can just do that. Okay, there's a blue ball. Okay, that gives me some time and some energy. So I just need to find those other crystals so I can get through the dragon's force field. You know, this guy's getting really sick of me by now. Feeling is mutual, buddy. All right, maybe this time I can actually kill this thing. Nice. Not waking up for some reason. Hello? I don't know if this is a glitch or, or what. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Okay, okay, come on. Oh, get you. <laughs> Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes the balls bounce around. Sometimes they don't, apparently. But now I have the green diamond. Now it's just a matter of getting to the dragon. Hopefully be able to use my trusty proximity sensor over there to help with that. See, starting to go up a little bit. Means I'm getting close. Probably wouldn't hurt to bag a little extra energy. You might be wondering, what's the significance of these different colored balls that I can shoot? Uh, the red ones are the basic destructive ones. You don't want to run into those. Uh, the gold ones recharge things. You want to pick those up and not shoot them at most of the creatures here. There's a certain dragon that you have to use those. Uh, the blue balls uh, slow things down. And the green ones transform a creature into another type of creature. But you don't know what you're going to transform it into, so you might want to be careful with those. Uh, you will probably be using the red ones most of the time. Now, looking at this game today, it might not look like much, but if you go back and look at the magazine reviews at the time, people were blown away by the graphics. 
I was reading the Zap C64 reviews of this, and they talked about how stunning it was and how unbelievably realistic uh, the movement and the uh, monster and creature animations are and everything. It's using a lot of the same technology, a lot of the same fractal routines they used in uh, Rescue on Fractalus and Coronas Rift. And you can say what you want to about Lucasfilms today or LucasArts today, but uh, back in the back in this period, they were really doing some taking a lot of big risks, trying out really new types of gameplay. All right, here's the second dragon. Now, unbeknownst to me at the time, I ain't doing jack with those red balls on them. Uh, the different dragons take different colored balls to destroy, so he just destroyed me. Here's the dragon from the third level. You notice I'm having to hit him with green bolts. Now if you're good with the space bar, if you hit the space bar right when you see those diamonds around his shots, you actually gain energy. You notice how my energy bar is actually climbing. Apparently some people cheat by just really quickly hammering the space bar. I didn't really find that to work though. Found it better to time it out and just try to hit it when it makes sense. If you don't time your bullets, you'll just uh, hit his bullets and they'll explode. So I guess ideally what you want to do is not shoot when he shoots out a green bu bullet or anything but a red bullet. Just catch it instead. And then only uh, shoot when he's uh, not firing at you or he's shooting a red bullet at you. So a little bit of strategy there. Pretty cool. There are some people out there that try to classify this game as a first-person shooter. It's a really early example of it. I don't agree with that really because you, you're not you're in a vehicle in this game after all, so it's really more of a <laughs> idolan uh, simulator. But you know it is pretty close. I, I can see where they're they're coming from on that. So I'm on level four now. I'm expecting this to be quite a bit more difficult. Now there's a red ball just hanging in the air. See when I shoot it, it becomes a yellow one. I can collect that and get a little more energy. I only got four minutes left. I really need to find that dragon. One cool thing is once you've collected the crystals, you only use them up if you if you have to get through that color force field. You get to keep the other ones. So if you don't die, you can just zip right through the levels. Not have to go searching all over the place for the right crystal. That's a cool little puffer puffer flying puffer fish thing. <laughs> uh, pretty cool, I guess. There's a lot of a lot of people uh, raved about the the creatures in this game. Now that now that is really cool. It's a double-headed dragon. <laughs> well, I had enough trouble with the single-headed one, so let's see what we can do with this one. I don't think he's happy to see me. I guess these monsters are all supposed to represent repressed emotions of some sort. So <laughs> you can only imagine. See if we can vanquish this thing. Not quite sure what color I'm supposed to be using on him. It doesn't look like he's taking much damage, though. Energy's going down. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be able to sidestep. Okay, that was it for that. Let's try that one more time. This time I switched to blue bullets. It's like that's having a an effect on him. He seems to be quite perturbed. Fortunately, I'm almost out of energy, so I'm going to have to try to catch some of his ammo. Oh, that one hit me. Let's try that one. Okay, got it. Now I can shoot him again. <laughs> kind of a strange uh, dynamic there. Oh, that's a red red bull, uh, red bullet. Nothing I can do about that but shoot it. Okay. Have some green. Okay, now I've got a little more energy. Let's keep pegging away at him. Bada bing! Okay. So that's the end of the fourth level. There's seven total. Let's take a look at some of the other versions of the game and see how they stack up. So our first contender here will be the Commodore 64 version. Sounds good. Let's do a side by side. As you can see, there's really not much difference graphically. The color scheme has changed. But the, I think the Atari 8-bit might look a little better. Some of the colors are a little bit muddier on the C64 version over there. But all in all, looks good, sounds good. 
Let's uh, look at the Amstrad version next. The Amstrad, of course, is the is a British computer, so a lot of Americans probably haven't seen this one. Some people claim, though, it has the best graphics. They prefer this one to the rest of the ports. Now, looking at them side by side like this, I, again, I don't see a lot of difference. I notice there's some colors in the uh, the fractal walls up there. I guess that looks pretty cool. Everything looks pretty well defined. Let's take a look at this monster creature animation. So, again, I'm just not really seeing a big difference there. They both look great. <laughs> okay, let's try the Apple II version. Here is the lackluster Apple II version. Really a, a letdown. Not so much graphically as audio-wise. I don't know if you can hear that crinkling, crackling sound. <laughs> it's really irritating. That'd be enough reason right there to go with one of the other versions. Animation-wise, it's not that bad, though. I guess I could live with it, but I definitely want to mute the sound. There are some other versions for Japanese computers, but I, I think we've done enough here. So there you have it, folks. The Idolin. Really interesting, ob somewhat obscure game from Lucasfilm. If you're looking for which version to play, I'd recommend the Atari 8-bit version, really. It uh, plays really well, and uh, it's fairly easy to get running in an emulator. So there you have it. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with a special video. I got to talk to Dave Marsh, the co creator of one of my favorite adventure games, Shadowgate. And Dave has uh, founded a company, he's managed to get the rights to the Shadowgate line. And he's releasing an all new, significantly expanded version of the game. He's uh, launching a Kickstarter to help fund that. It's really exciting stuff. I know you guys want to hear all about it, so stay tuned. As always, I want to thank you if you have donated to the show. It's really, really important, guys. If you like Matt Chat, if you want to see these episodes and interviews coming, please, please, please go to armchairarcade.com. Look for the Matt Chat link in the corner. Any uh, donation of any size is welcome. You can just submit a dollar or uh, you can submit, uh, sign up for a $10 a month subscription, $5 a month, whatever uh, you guys want to donate. I really need it and appreciate it. So thank you very, very much. And what about that ale of the week? Uh, this week I've got a little uh, number here called Oktoberfest. Uh, Martin style. This is uh, from Point Brewery. Uh, Stevens Point Brewery, I believe this is in uh, uh, Stevens Point, Wisconsin. A uh, really nice bottle here. Uh, some nice artwork there. It uh, doesn't tell me anything else about the beer. Oh, there we go. 5% alcohol by volume, so uh, relatively mild. Uh, let's get this open and see what it's all about. Alright, so I got the Point's Oktoberfest here in the old drinking horn. I've been Trying to figure out what this smells like. It's kind of peachy. Maybe some cherry, a little grape in there, maybe. It smells nice. Well, let's give it a taste. What does that taste like? Kind of a watery taste, not really strong flavor. You know, it almost tastes like a, dare I say, a Budweiser. <laughs> not a very good, uh, not a very good selection here. I'll give it one more try. Uh, yeah, just not a very, not a very pleasant tasting uh, ale, I'm afraid. Um, the flavor is, is definitely taste, get that sort of uh, cereal taste you might get with a Bud or Budweiser or something like that. Um, it's not terrible but uh, I definitely would not recommend this uh, so I'm not gonna give this one any horns uh, just stay away from the point uh, Oktoberfest believe, <laughs> believe me buddy there are many many better Oktoberfests out there than this one Ugh. all right so what about that quotation uh, the I, th I thought it was only appropriate given the the game this week to pick a quotation from Sigmund Freud and what I found is really cool and it goes something like this Dreams are often most profound when they seem the most crazy. See you guys next week. I'm Dr. Freud. What you may call me, Siki? Oh my God. <laughs>
all seem to be suffering from a mild form of hysteria. Oh, God. You are such a key. <laughs> Way to go, Egghead. 